So, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to introduce uh, Alex Templin to you this morning. Uh, she came to me last semester with an interest in cardiothoracic anatomy, of all things. And uh, we, came, uh, we, 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 we came to this idea for a, what I thought at the time was a fairly straightforward project. But now, in her second semester working on it, it's taken a turn for the very interesting. So, take it away. Okay. Um, well, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, before I get into kind of the meat of my research, I'd like to give just kind of a little bit of background to um, basic information on some of the anatomy um, that you'll have to know to kind of understand the research. Um, so first, I'd like to go over mammalian circulation. So uh, mammals have a four-chamber heart. Um, they have a right atrium, a right ventricle, a left atrium, and a left ventricle. Um, so the right side of the heart is typically devoted to um, sending blood to uh, deoxygenated blood to the lungs, and then the left side of the heart is kind of devoted to sending oxygenated blood from the lungs <coughs> to the rest of the body. Um, so in more specific detail, um, the deoxygenated blood is going to enter the right atrium from veins. Um, then it's going to move from the right atrium to the right ventricle, where it's going to be pumped to the lungs. It's going to undergo gas exchange and become oxygenated. And then it's going to um, enter the left atrium through the pulmonary veins, move to the left ventricle, and then be pumped through the aorta to the rest of the body. Um, I'd also like to give a little bit kind of a basic uh, a circulatory anatomy of a fish. Um, so fish actually only have a two-chamber part. They have an atrium and a ventricle. Blood is going to leave the ventricle into the ventral aorta, um, enter the gills. Then it's going to become oxygenated and enter the dorsal aorta where it's going to be pumped to the rest of the body. Now this image is kind of misleading because it only has two um, gill, like branchial arteries. Um, so I just kind of want to clarify that fish have five gill slits um, and six branchial arteries, which is important when we're kind of talking about the development of kind of more, more like important arteries and more evolved creatures like mammals. Um, so the working hypothesis is that the third branchial artery, um, which is gill circulation, is going to um, kind of develop into the carotid arteries. Um, the fourth branchial artery is going to kind of develop into the right subclavian and the aorta. And then the pulmonary artery is going to arise from the sixth branchial artery. It's important to note that blood vessels are typically going to grow kind of wherever they're needed. Um, so when it comes to the evolution of kind of a lung, that's really important because fish um, kind of started out developing this organ called a swim bladder, which is an outpocketing of that digestive system. And basically what that means is it's kind of, the swim bladder is homologous to what we have as lungs today. And what, what they do with it is they kind of, they can inflate it or deflate it with air to control their buoyancy in the water. Um, what's important about this though is that the sixth branchial artery is actually the closest artery to uh, the swim bladder. So the idea that arteries are going to grow wherever they're needed is really important because that kind of backs up that hypothesis that the sixth branchial artery um, kind of develops into the pulmonary artery. Um, so a little bit more about my research. Um, it actually began, began with the genus Ambostoma, which is a um, which is a genus of salamander that undergoes a process called neoteny, which means that they retain their larval characteristics into adulthood. Um, this is important because as, uh, in their larval form, they have gills. But if something happens to their environment, like it dries up or something like that, they have the ability to undergo metamorphosis and develop lungs. So this is important because obviously you're, the, idea, the idea of what we were researching was the development between the circulation of gills and lungs. When, we, when I opened up these organisms, though, I was having issues actually finding the pulmonary artery. So I decided to kind of look at an organism that was more researched um, and is actually included in our comparative vertebrate anatomy text, um, which is the salamander nectaris. Um, what's important about nectaris is that they have both gills and lungs. So this kind of throws a wrench into, the, uh, a kind of in the, into our working hypothesis here. What happens if these salamanders have both gills and lungs? Um, how is that going to affect that, that hypothesis about the sixth pulmonary artery or the sixth branchial artery developing into the pulmonary artery? 
Um, so here's our other um, image that was actually included in the textbook that we use for comparative vertebrate anatomy. You can see our dorsal aorta here, our paired dorsal aorta. But what's the most important to note here is these are our branchial arteries right here. And you can see this is the sixth branchial artery. You can see that the pulmonary artery is kind of, kind of branching off of that. Um, so that's important when, we, when I go into my, into my research. So here is um, one of the specimens that I dissected. As you can see, it looks pretty much like the textbook. You can see our dorsal aorta, our subclavians, our paired dorsal aorta. But what seems to be missing here is our pulmonary artery, which should run right through here according to the text. Right through here. So my next thought was, okay, maybe I'm not looking laterally enough. Maybe it's closer to the branchial arteries than I originally expected. So I, I looked, I moved that skin back, and I looked here. Here's our bronchial arteries here. Here is our, our subclavians right here. This is our paired dorsal aorta. But what we're still missing here is a pulmonary artery that should branch right through here, down here. So my next thought was, okay, maybe the pulmonary artery isn't located where the textbook says it is. Maybe it's located a little bit more posterior than originally anticipated. So that's what I did. I looked more posterior. So here, you can still see this kind of, this is still the kind of the image that we were looking at earlier. But I'm a little bit further posterior and I've labeled some important veins, um, important arteries, sorry. Here's the lung right here. And you can see the pulmonary vein running like directly through it. But what seems to still be missing is that pulmonary artery that's leading like directly to the lung. So I looked a little bit more posterior. Maybe the lung is getting its circulation, its blood, lower um, in the body, more posterior. So here's our lung right here. Um, and you might ask yourself, why is the lung so long and skinny, and, and why does it reach so far down into the abdominal cavity? It's because um, these organisms don't have diaphragms, and they're mainly aquatic, so they don't really use their, uh, they don't really use their lungs as much um, as mammals do. Mammals rely on their lungs for their metabolism. These organisms don't. Um, but you can still see here, here's our dorsal aorta, you can still see here that there's no obvious um, branches to the lung. So um, I found some interesting stuff while dissecting as well. Here's our lung here, but I did happen to find this slight blue discoloration right here, which I noted to be um, kind of an unknown blood vessel. Um, I, after further investigation, I realized that it um, emptied into the sinus venosus, which means that it's, it's a vein, it's not, it's not an artery. Um, but that does lead into um, kind of more of what I'm going to be planning on doing this semester. So the hypothesis here is that our sixth uh, branchial artery turns, kind of develops into the pulmonary artery. But what we can see with, these salam with at least these salamanders is that that may not actually be what's going on. Um, so we may need to update our hypothesis, maybe, maybe that the sixth branchial artery, at least in these specimens or other amphibians, doesn't develop into the pulmonary artery. Um, so my research this semester is going to be looking at where that pulmonary artery is, um, kind of how it develops, and kind of update that hypothesis. Maybe it doesn't apply to these specific organisms. Thank you. Um, and since I uh, kind of finished last semester, I did dissect another one, um, and it was still, the, the conclusion was still the same. The pulmonary artery wasn't located where it expected. So they all look like that? There's a little bit of variability in some of the other, like, arteries and things like that, but, and for the most part, there, I mean, there was no pulmonary artery where it was anticipated. Yes. Did you introduce some dye actually to, to see all those arteries and, and vessels, or this is just natural blood? Um, well, the specimens had already been, they had been injected with latex oh, they before I the dissected them. Yeah. What actual dye was used? This kind of... I'm not entirely sure, honestly. I know it's a latex based uh, dye, so I mean, I know it's latex. So basically, you inject them alive, or? Uh, I don't know the process for sure. 
But, I mean, I would assume that, I mean, they're dead. And then they... Because would... they have to circulate this guy, right? Well, if you you just in, if it's injected under pressure, then it just fills the blood vessels. Oh. And it's usually injected through the dorsal aorta, so it kind of like spreads out. Right. Okay. Let's thank our speaker. Yeah. Very nice.